Hi there, I hope you're well. In the workshop this week, well, we're taking a look at seasonal gift ideas for makers. That's coming up next. Yes, indeed, it is that most wonderful time of the year when we get told regularly that we are so difficult to buy for, as if that's our fault. Uh, I started doing these videos a few years back because, well, we are kind of a tough crowd when it comes to receiving gifts. And I just thought it was uh, over the course of the year I come across products, things that you might not automatically think of as, as potential gifts, but they're just handy little bits and pieces. So I've got a fair few of those and we'll go through some of those to start with. And in fact, we'll start with uh, my old pal, Carl Pountney. Um, if you don't know Carl, Carl is Strawbite Workshop on uh, YouTube. Uh, Carl made the original waist side jigs. I've known Carl a while. Um, these are the waist side jigs they featured in these videos and other videos. Carl's expanded his 3D printing empire a little bit and has come up with these hose clips. Uh, these are designed oops, to go around your hose and let you just clip the cable into it, either permanently or temporarily, so that you can move the cable around that they're very very precisely made to give just enough give in the cable in the fitting so that you can actually get the cable in there and yet still slide it along really nice really clever uh, especially if you've got the newer festal hose that goes from 36 down to 27 they can be a bit of a pain uh, he's got a set for those and they are really good like many people on my older saws i have a piece of tape over the uh, over the blade cover, uh, it's actually made a little a little three D printed cover for those. Now I'm very kindly put my logo on it there as well. Uh, they're a great idea as well. It it's a silly simple little thing, but it really does help with the dust collection to keep that covered up. So 100% uh, recommended from Carl at Straw Bite Workshop for all of those products. Great stuff. Um, next up, we've got another one man maker, my pal. Paul Cunningham from Cunningham's Custom Creations, one of the founders of the Essex Makers. And one of the things Paul did was this. It's a maker's mallet, a flat packed mallet that you built together yourself. It's a great idea and a really solid, chunky thing. Uh, comes in birch ply for the handle and then faces in the hardwood of your choice. If you do want one of these, you have to get hold of Paul through Instagram, uh, Cunningham's Custom Creations. Just send him a message and see if he can make one for you in time for Christmas. Uh, next up, we've got a, a 3D, 3D printed one again. This is from uh, Kevin Parr. Kevin is a, a long time subscriber of mine, also a Patreon supporter. Thank you everybody who supports me on Patreon or through YouTube uh, memberships. Uh, Kevin's come up with a really clever little rail clip with a dual purpose. As a rail clip, it goes into the rail, as the usual way, it's designed to fit either the path, any sort of 20 mil dog basically, either the UJK path dogs or the bench dogs, uh, quad dogs are the ones that I've got here. And it just slides over there really tightly. It's a very nice snug fit and it keeps the rail in place. The whole point of this of course is to keep the rail static if you use uh, dogs in an NFT style top. Sometimes the rail can get away with you as you move the saw along it. Uh, these just keep it steady basically and give you enough movement in the rail so they can lift it up to slide the work pieces in underneath but these ones have a dual purpose uh, very clever you just sort of take them off the rail and flip them around and they become guide rail stops so that if you either want to make a plunge cut and you want to make sure you you don't kick back or i'm more more likely to use uh, a router where i want defined start and stop points so making fluted cuts finger cuts uh, in, a, in a fascia, for example. Uh, these work for that as well. Kevin sells these through eBay. They're great value at around about £10 a pair and they fit any guide, any standard pattern guide rail basically with the upward facing T-slot. So Festool, Makita, XL, I think Triton, uh, any of those anyway, with the, the, the standard sort of Festool pattern. I'd say very good uh, and really nice to have the dual, the dual purpose on them. So next up, we've got ourselves a marking knife. These are a beautiful piece of work, and they're made by Nate Wiltshire, who is simply ornate on Instagram and on Etsy. Again, links down in the video description below. Uh, Nate is principally a metal worker, does a lot of knives and small pieces of jewelry, has a lovely Etsy store. These are only made to order, so you do need to start a conversation with Nate over at uh, Etsy or message him through Instagram. Marking knives don't have to be as beautiful as this, but you know, if they are, well, <laughs> where's the harm in that? Nate is also 
host of Make Your Own Way podcast, which is always worth a listen to as well. So give that a listen. Go and have a look at Nate's uh, Etsy store or contact him through uh, Instagram to get your hands on one of these. Next up, we've got a rather beautiful notebook. Um, these are made by Idris. Made by Idris is the name of the Etsy store. Uh, and Idris is the name of the guy who makes them. These are uh, genuinely lovely notebooks, beautifully presented, entirely handmade, leather bound, hand stitched um, in a variety of different types of paper. Uh, this one is obviously just a plain notebook. You can get graph paper, you can get lined for note taking and journaling or dot pattern as well, I believe. They're all handmade and hand bound. Uh, they start at around 20 pounds, which is astonishingly good value for a handmade notebook. And this one, I think I paid 35 quid for this. I've wanted one for a while and I've just bought this recently. Uh, and it is just a lovely, lovely thing made by Idris on Etsy. We'll get you all the sizes and finishes and prices. Um, again, lovely thing. Thanks Idris for, for this. It's a, a beautiful, beautiful notebook. So one of the folks who seems to have made the jump from being sort of a, a one man designer, installer, maker, to having a complete sort of 3D printer type sideline business is my pal Steve Tomlin. Steve is uh, SBT design on all the social things. Uh, Steve came up with the block scribe, which I've featured in previous videos. Again, a very simple, very clever little 3D printed thing, and he's expanded on that, iterated on that to include levels and all kinds of stuff. Steve's now come out with the block scribe ultimate edition. This is actually a uh, solid block of aluminium, precision, CNC'd and anodized. Uh, again, tools don't have to look as good as this. Accessories don't have to look as good as this, but when they do, they're, they're just lovely. You just want to either hold it and treasure it or build a little pedestal to put it on, but it's solid enough to last a lifetime of use. Uh, they're, they're great. It's such a great idea. They're great little gadgets, and I thoroughly recommend these. Blockscribe Ultimate Edition in aluminium. Uh, hair under £20, I think. I'll put prices up on screen because I can't remember offhand how much they are, but a really, really, really nice uh, piece of kit. Steve also does uh, a couple of hinge jigs. He does an inset hinge jig, which I'm not aware of anybody else doing. Again, that's featured in these videos before. Uh, and also he's done a um, concealed hinge jig, but unlike any other, it's just designed to be used with a router. You just got to set the depth, then use the thickness of the jig itself to set the depth of the plunge align it using the center line against a pencil mark, clamp it down. There are magnets actually in the face of the jig. So the jig will latch on there and not come up at all. And it really is super simple to use. One of the great things about this is firstly, you take the tool to the work, which is nice if you've got uh, larger doors to do. I used to do mine with a dedicated drill press and that was fine for a couple of small doors but when you've got bigger doors with three or four hinges that was a bit of a pain this is a much easier way to do it and critically as we're working in mostly MDF uh, for these kind of doors you get dust collection built in with a router that you're using so you really do get a much cleaner cut with none of the dust problems that are associated with all the other drill based systems. Great value for money. And if you do need to make more than one hinge pocket uh, for a concealed hinge, uh, this is the one to go for. I think it's, it's yeah, just so clever and so neat. So what do you need to do after you've drilled out your hinge pocket? Well, of course you need to drill the fixing holes for your hinge. Uh, I'm, I'm always getting asked for another show the process, uh, what type of self centering drill bit I use. It's very easy to get, really cheap and cheerful ones of these, but they're generally pretty terrible. And I really like the trend snappy bit set. Uh, I got mine as part of, excuse me, a big sort of set like this. I think I featured that one in last year's uh, video, but this particular one is available. I think you get a, th a set of three for about 20 pounds or thereabouts. They're great value and uh, really nicely made. Um, they're just sort of solid and reliable, so much better than the cheap and cheerful ones. I've had lots of the cheap and cheerful ones and really am much better off with something decent. And once you've drilled your hole, of course, then you're gonna need a screwdriver to drive those screws in. Um, if you're anything like me, all my tools are here in the workshop. So over at home, if I need to 
put a screw in or drill a hole or something small, I end up bodging it horribly because I just can't be bothered to come and get my proper toolkit. So what I've taken to doing is leaving one of these at home. Um, as the home toolkit, it's absolutely brilliant. It looks like just an ordinary screwdriver, but it is actually electric with a little light and everything. It's got the standard detent on the double-ended bit, so you can actually replace that with well, virtually any of the ones. In fact, you could probably put the... There you go. Got your trend snappy bit in there. Uh, any of the standard quarter-inch hex uh, bits. Uh, it's not the most powerful in the world, obviously, but it does seem to be very, very good. It's got an automatic spindle lock, so you can do the last sort of quarter turn yourself if you choose to. Uh, forward and reverse, of course, and it's charged by micro USB, so actually really, really good. It feels just like a slightly chunky regular screwdriver. It is actually really nice to hold uh, and works exceptionally well for the little bits and pieces that I've needed to do at home as a home toolkit. Yeah, thoroughly recommended. Uh, continuing with the small tool theme, um, <laughs> I've got a pair of really, really tiny Nipex grips. I, I saw my uh, Instagram pal uh, Phil Makes Things showed these on Instagram a few weeks back and I looked at them and I thought man he's got huge hands because you held them like that. I didn't realize they're so small. These are only four inches long 100 mil but they have a whopping 30 mil jaw opening on them and because they're so small they actually have a really quite a thin uh, jaws to them as well so you can actually get them under things, which is very useful. Uh, they are tiny. Um, they're a real step up from the kind of pliers and things that you get on multi-tools. So yeah, thoroughly recommend it. Perhaps a little bit indulgent, a little bit pricey, around about £22, I think they were. But great. Do you need them? Eh, probably not. Am I going to use them now I've got them? You bet I am. They're absolutely fantastic. So looking next at some slightly cheaper tools, I bought a, a cheap and cheerful dowel jig from Amazon recently. Uh, I'm doing a series of videos about basic cabinet construction in the new year and I wanted to talk about all the different ways in which you can do it. So I bought a, a very basic, I think it was £15 dowel jig. It uh, comes with all the drill stops that you need but uh, no drill bits so you need to have a decent set of bits for it. And I use this just for fun when I made my uh, lightweight trestles recently. I made one of those with uh, dominoes and I made the other one with with dowels and I've got to say apart from the fact that you know there's no dust collection um, the dowels one <laughs> went together really well it didn't take significantly longer uh, and it was about 720 something pounds cheaper than <laughs> the domino so yeah no problems with this at all again just combine this with some decent drill bits and some you know, off-the-shelf dowels and you've got invisible fixings as long as you can clamp it together comfortably. Great stuff. Now way back when I did my first one of these I included a Miroc ruler. Miroc ruler is made by a Vladimir in the Ukraine. Uh, these are these are lovely. Uh, you know you can't sort of have just one so very soon after I had a the Miroc square as well. Vladimir very kindly put my uh, 10 minute workshop logo in it too which is really nice and he now has a bigger version of the T-square. This is 510 mil long. Uh, again, the usual sort of Miroc precision, thoroughly recommended. Uh, ships through his Etsy store worldwide. Uh, mine arrived very quickly. And I think this one in 510 is about 38 pounds. There's, there's a 300 mil or a 310 for about 25, but the, the 510 one is really good because it gives you that extra sort of reach almost all the way across a standard sort of carcass. Now in many of my uh, previous videos I've recommended a packet of basic Stateler Norris pencils. Again, they're a school pencil, they can survive seven, eight, nine year olds, they can survive time in your workshop. This year, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I've always liked a mechanical pencil, but I've had uh, a few that have just you know, relatively expensive ones that have just died and, and not very good. So I put a few questions out on Instagram for recommendations. Uh, and one that kept coming up time and time again was the Bic-Matic. Um, this, this looks like a disposable pencil. It is a plastic mechanical pencil with an 07 lead. 
uh, and yet it is actually refillable. A uh, box of these, a box of a dozen costs about £4.50. So I've got these <laughs> spread around the workshop all over and I've been using them for the last sort of month or so. And they're fantastic. I've got to say they are, uh, you know, so useful. They don't need sharpening. It's a consistent lead thickness. So if you're doing a long line, it doesn't get thicker as you get further down it. And they're just, you know, cheap enough to have everywhere. Uh, and yet they're refillable, unlike some of the entry-level ones uh, are effectively disposable. Plus, of course, these are made of plastic, which means hopefully there's more wood for us to be able to make things out of. That's how it works, right? Uh, next up is sort of kind of in the same vein. I, these are these are so line fabric pencil leads. I haven't sort of mistakenly picked up Mrs. Ten Minutes bits and pieces. Uh, these were recommended to me on Instagram by a uh, follower Ubi. Ubi DeFeo on Instagram, go and give uh, Ubi a follow, have a look at his Insta, he's got a good grid. And uh, they are white pencil leads. Now these are 0.9 of a mil, so you do need a 0.9 mechanical pencil to take them. But they're just really good if you ever, if you've ever had to put a pencil mark on one of the darker hardwoods. Uh, Wenge was, was my last one, or even just sort of Maranti or um, Sapili. Sometimes it can be hard to see. Having a white pencil mark makes the world a difference. Uh, as I say, it's an 09 lead, so you do need a pencil that's appropriate for it. And Ubi also recommended this one, the Staedtler 925-2509. It's actually a really nice mechanical pencil. Generally, it comes in other lead sizes as well. But this one works really nicely with these Soline fabric marking leads. And finally, um, you're going to have to bear with me a second while I go and get them. A pack of pencil erasers, rubbers. Um, these are just handy sort of things to have generally, but the thing I've used them for most recently is to actually just put them under my bandsaw. Um, they're, they're just generally handy things to have because you can use them to stack things on top of or space things out with. But I got another, another bandsaw not so long back. Uh, it's the cheap Aldi one, uh, the cheap 10 inch Aldi one. And it's great, but I had horrible vibration off it. Uh, and just putting a a rubber, a pencil eraser under each of the four sides has made a world of difference to it. It's, it's transformed it. So incredibly useful, well worth the few pounds <laughs> that they cost. And of course also handy for rubbing out those occasional mistakes as well. And finally, let me show you a couple of bits and pieces that you can't buy yet, but you will be able to buy very soon. I've finally got a little run of my uh, clamping squares made up. Uh, Mick at Formatic CNC has very kindly found space to run a couple of sheets of the birch ply through for me. So I've got a few pairs of these available for sale, or at least I will do soon. These will go up in my Etsy as soon as they're available. Uh, and I will let you know on Instagram and all the usual places when they are. They've got a little bit of cleaning up to do on those and also a little bit of branding applied to them. If you do need a branding iron or a leather stamp, then give Mike at Outpost Workshop UK a shout. He's on Instagram and Etsy under that name. Uh, he's, he did the uh, branding iron when I did my little Maker Coins for Maker Central last year. And he's uh, doing me a couple of branding irons. Uh, for the branding on these, uh, great service, really good price, and uh, very much appreciated uh, to both Mike and Mick <laughs> for both of those. And I'll call that done, I think. There are links in the video description down below to everything I've shown here today, so be sure to take a look for additional information like discount codes. I hope that's given you a few more extra ideas anyway, uh, but I'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up or leave me a comment down below. And as always, thanks so much to my Patreon pals and my YouTube members for their amazing support of the channel. I really do appreciate the comments in particular and the feedback on the behind the scenes videos, exclusive content and weekly vlogs that are just my way of saying thanks so much to those who do provide member support. Uh, that's it for this week though. Thanks again for watching. As always, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.